This video is gonna be on the importance of a healing abutment when doing a dental implant. It's gonna help shape the gum tissue so we can try to make the replacement crown look as natural as possible. Let's first kind of review what looks ideal. Now, these are not the same two patients, uh, but this kind of shows a natural set of teeth. There's no implant here. This is all natural teeth. And you can see if we follow the gum line, okay, it goes up and then it comes down to this little point, this little triangle. And then it goes up and then it comes back down. And sometimes these, these arc areas are smooth and sometimes they're not. But basically the theme is we want these little uh, triangular things. We call these papillas. We want the papilla to be there, okay? And then we want the arc of the gum to go up like this. The problem happens, however, is that when a tooth is taken out, if an implant isn't put in soon, uh, the gum tissue will heal and the bone underneath will heal and that socket will fill in and it will just be flat. And so you can see the gum tissue goes up and comes down, up, comes down, but then it goes across and it's flat. And then it goes back up and it comes back down. If you just try placing a tooth or a, you know um, an implant crown right here, it's always going to look like it's just kind of tacked in there. It'll never quite look like it belongs. You want to have a tooth looks like it's just kind of nestled into the gum tissue. So we have to try to shape that gum tissue uh, to kind of mold it, if you will, into a, a position that will allow a crown to make it look like it fits the way that it should. And so if we look at that same example, this is, we'll, we'll call it ideal, or at least this is what's naturally what, should, what it should look like. Uh, you have that flat one we just saw, but then look at this. Here's someone missing a front tooth as well. And look how that gum tissue arcs up. This would be much easier to try to put an implant crown in and make it look good compared to this. This would be much more difficult to make that look like it blends with the rest of the other teeth. So how we can help shape that is a thing called a healing abutment. So a healing abutment is just something that goes over, I'm sorry, goes into the actual implant and then it has a special shape to it. It's kind of a, a funnel, almost like a conical shape and fans out um, and can create that gum tissue look. Here's kind of a close up view. Here's the dental implant and here is the healing abutment put in place. And that healing abutment has a little screw right here. You see that little hole? There's a screw that goes right through the top of that and connects this piece to that piece. But this goes up and then it curves out. Uh, I know those examples I showed earlier of actual teeth that were front teeth. This is kind of showing a back tooth. But the same principle holds. We want to make sure that that triangular uh, papilla goes up between the neighboring teeth. That kind of helps food from getting blocked inside of there. So we can put this in here. The implant has the healing abutment on there and we can have this shape to it that will come up and go over and that's going to help shape the gum tissue. So what does that look like clinically? Well, here you go. Here's that kind of conical piece. It's in place. If you take that out after it's been in there for a few months, you can see this gum tissue kind of has that little funnel. It kind of looks like now you could look like a tooth could actually fit into that space and kind of incorporate itself into the gum line so it looks like it belongs. Here's another good shape right there. That's going to be very nice to put an implant uh, crown and abutment into that situation. Here's another one. You can just tell it just kind of has that conical shape so that when the crown goes in, it just looks like it sets right into the gum line. Because um, here's the reason why that is so important. When an implant is put, put in there, especially on back teeth, the width of an implant is going to be much more narrow compared to what was there before. Like here's a molar. Look how wide it is. We go from here to here. And then here, here, actually they have a third molar here that you from here and then we kind of lose it off the film, but you can see how wide that is compared to how wide, or I should say how narrow an implant is. Uh, they can't make implants any wider because if they went, you know, if you kind of go this way, uh, they'd start coming outside the bone on the cheek or the tongue side. But so we're limited in how big the cylinder can be, this implant that can be put in there. So this is always going to be more narrow than the natural tooth. Once again, wide, and not as wide. Um, this one's not so bad. This one's kind of wide, but this one's just a little bit skinnier. And here's one that's very skinny compared to what was there before. But here's the problem. We've got a narrow root, an implant, but yet the crown that's going to fit on top of that implant has to have the same width or the same, it has to pick, uh, do the same mesial distal uh, width as what was there before. So you have a tooth that needs to go in place that has to have the same shape, but the support that's there is much more narrow than where it was before. And so you have this connection between this wide crown and this narrow implant, the two have to connect and um, you just can't make it shoot up like this. It has to have a shape to it. Uh, let me show another example. 
Here, this looks very nice. It flows up and goes over. There's no food is going to get blocked inside of here. If you look at the gum tissue, it's going to look like it wicks in between. So that, that little um, papilla is going to fill in. What we're trying to do is avoid a lollipop shape. You know, We don't want to have a narrow little implant and a big old fat uh, crown sitting on top of it. You can imagine if that was the case, food would get stuck in between here. But this one comes up and emerges very nicely. It has that kind of plump feel to it so that when it sets on top of the implant, it's going to be filling up the space that it needs to fill up. So the day we go put the, uh, or take the impression, this is what we like to see. We like to have the healing abutment. It's been there for a few months. We take the healing abutment out. We now have this nice depression of gum tissue. So we put our impression part in there, impression coping. When we take the impression, the lab can have uh, a, repli repli yeah, a representation or replica of the uh, gum tissue when they make the final crown. So that's why we do a healing abutment.